Heroes, unite! First of all, I want to say this is going to be a really quick video because not only do I not exactly have a lot to say, but the software for the camera and or the computer are just going haywire. Something's going on and it keeps us, well, essentially freezing up and then my grandfather has to restart the computer somewhere in the making of the video process. Either while it's trying to compress it or while I'm trying to record it. And aside from that, I'm actually trying to do some level up training with my Pokemon so I can get my, well, every Pokemon that I own up to level 100 before the new game comes out. Because if you've seen info about it, you know there's something specific that'll happen or that you'll be able to do with your, once your Pokemon are up to level 100. I won't specifically mention it for those who have not seen it, but I will say this. This is, this is actually a video to let all you Poke fans out there know, or Pokemaniacs, or Pokemon fans, or whatever else you want to be called, that I have completed the Pokedex. I actually asked my mom to write it down so it would be as, well as accurate as possible <coughs> and according to what was written I completed the National Pokedex in Pokemon Alpha Sapphire at 5.24 a.m. on the 15th of this month and because I have done so and because I got poker thanks to someone in Japan back in Heart Gold and Soul Silver and I'm saying that because I got the Pokemon that gave it to me via GTS. I remember it was a level 100. Well, I can't remember the level. I think it was level 100, but it was a Japanese Frost Lass. Kind of hard to forget something as important as that. Well, that aside was the first starter Pokemon you ever got. Those are possibly two of the most exciting things to ever happen in Pokemon. That and the first time you ever catch a specific legendary. Especially one like Mew. I'm really glad they put it out via GTS because it was technically the first legit Mew I'd gotten. All the other ones that I'd had prior to that, I'd gotten either by, or what I call truly, truly legit. I either got through trading with someone or through an action replay. But thanks to this, thanks to the special event one that went on a few months ago, via the whole 20th Pokemon anniversary game free Pokemon sending through cards and whatnot, saying that's been going on the last several months and will be going on for two more months. Thanks to that, I finally got my first truly legit Mew. So, yeah, first I guess I should say thanks to the Pokemon Company for even doing that. And back to what I was saying about National Pokedex. If there's a Pokemon that you want, specifically, and you're having a hard time getting it, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to give it to you. It can be everything from gender, ability, shiny or not, half pokerous, level, and evolutionary stage. The only, as well as any random item, the only issues I'll probably have, or that'll be probably hard to get, but I'll do what I can, is if it's the hidden ability, and if it's a shine. I mean, because I completed the National Pokedex, or rather the Hoenn Pokedex, I actually I can't even remember which one I got this because of, but thanks to me doing the whole completing of the Pokedex, I actually got the shiny charm. It does make it easier to get shiny Pokemon, but as you know, they're still going to be very rare. I will admit, I'm trying to get all the shiny Pokemon now. 
just going to be excessively hard to do because of the whole, and they're super rare in the first place, even if you do have a shiny charm. And the hidden abilities, that's going to be a bit difficult to get because kind of have to find one in the wild that has it, and then, and then I'd have to breed it. But if I can find one, I'll be more than happy to get it and give it to you. Even if it takes several games or takes a while, I will, I can guarantee you this. If any of you have a specific Pokemon request, let me know via email. By the way, my email address is heroesunited at outlook.com. I think. I really can't remember if Outlook is a .com or .net. I know that sounds bad, but. If you know Outlook, then you can find it. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to check real quick because I don't want to be giving someone wrong information. Yep, it's a dot .com. Uh, yeah. Anyways, when you email me, Make sure you give the specific details about the Pokemon. And by the way, if you do want to contact me through some other message, other than an email, well, don't give me your contact information because, first of all, I don't want to be seeming like a creep because I'm asking for your contact information, nor do I want you to feel weirded out by giving it to me, nor do I want some, well, somehow you getting in trouble with someone because you did that. So, all I'll say is this. If you happen to want to give me contact information so I have a better way to contact you, well, of course, take you for of course to make sure you don't get in trouble, get permission from whoever you need to get permission from if you need to get permission from them. But first because I technically am not the one who owns the computer. It's my grandfather's, and he takes care of security. Any sort of communication kind of has to go through him. I mean, Which, by the way, except for possibly friend codes on my 3DS. So if you want to give me a friend code, give it to me via email. Because I don't think you nor I want everyone in the world seeing it. I mean, sure, there is a possibility that a random hacker could, out in the world could hack into anyone's 3DS at essentially any given time and find that information and give it to random people. But that information is still not really going to do much unless the person you got the friend code from also had, basically, it's not, if one person, basically if person A has person B's friend code, person B is it's not really going to do much unless person B also has person A's friend code. So even if one person has someone else's friend code, it won't do much unless both sides have the corresponding side's friend code. Yeah, I guess it would be better to just check your 3DS manual for specifications when it just look at what it says about friend codes. But basically, if you do want to contact me through some other method, I will say this much, the only, uh, only social media sites I have access to, aside from YouTube, are one called Meverse. But don't contact me on there because, well, I'll just put it this way. It could result in both of us getting banned. They don't have an issue with two people contacting each other, but if it's to talk about something that's... Well, not something for a specific community. Dealing with the specific game, you won't really be able to. Plus, that makes it a bit too, well, public, so to speak. I do have Skype, but that's about it. I could even, I would, personally, I think it would just be easier to contact through email. But if you want to contact me on Skype, don't give me your Skype account info. Just let me know, and base, and I guess in a sense, send me a request. And then, of course, I'd have to take it up with my grandfather, and well, let him decide if he said. Then, 
because I check my email every day. I'll get back to you as soon as I find out. Which, by the way, quick information about emails. If I don't, I know some people out there are probably going to be so impatient, so to the point of if they don't get a response back right away or within a certain amount of time, they'll keep essentially spamming the emails out until they get a response. I check my email every day. I know that right now my channel is not that famous. I will admit I hope to one day possibly become one of the most famous channels on YouTube. Not for level of fame, but so I can, well, so I can better help people and spread the word of God. But, since it, but until then, I should be able to answer any of your questions or requests via email. I'll try to answer them as soon as I get them, which I check almost every single day. So if I have not responded within two days, then feel free to send. Then feel free to resend it. And I'm saying that because if I check it almost every day, it shouldn't really be that big an issue with finding it. Usually, if I do skip one day, it's usually just I skip one day, and then I get back to it the next day. So usually, I respond within two days of the of receiving the email. But then again, because I don't really receive a lot of emails in the first place, because well, I only have still have contact with one of my friends, and me and that person usually talk through the phone. Haven't really very much now because I've run out of things to talk about. And with my brain, well, pretty much going 90 to nothing, kind of like, I guess you could say, my brain is like a race car without a handbrake. It speeds up, it takes forever to slow down. I mean, yeah. And as such, I haven't really talked to my friend that much lately. Not because I'm trying to be rude, but because it's kind of hard to talk to someone when you can't even focus long enough to hear half what they're saying. Of course, it doesn't really help me much when I have to keep asking him what in the known omniverse did he just say. Either because he was speaking too fast I couldn't hear, because thanks to my brain going haywire I wasn't able to pay attention, or because the phone wouldn't pick it up. It, Well, it just makes me feel a bit like an idiot when I can't hear what he's saying. And if you're losing your hearing for one reason or other, you know how that feels. I mean, yeah. But anyways, if I do ever become that famous, I would like to become as famous as Dan TDM. Doesn't matter if I become more famous or less famous, but if I ever happen to do, do get to a level of fame similar to Dan TDM to the point of I'm getting swarmed with comments and a sea of comments, essentially, and then, well, then I guess when it comes to that point, I'll give you guys an update to let you know how to send the emails and how to get a hold of me, and basically any change to the whole email, contact me, message thingy, but chances are that's probably going to be several years from now before it gets to that point. But, who knows, anything is possible. It, But that doesn't mean it's very probable. So, yeah. Well, d well I will say one thing about the items, and then I'm going to go. Because I just stayed about the Pokemon stuff, and because my sleep schedule has gone haywire. Well... I've only done one battle today, and because of the whole Blissey thing, you can only do the, because I'm using the Blissey training, with the whole Blissey bases, I would say I'll leave a link down in the description below, but honestly, I don't even know how to do that. I would like to find out though, but at the moment, I don't know how. But anyways, if you know what I'm talking about, you know it can only be one, done once a day. I have seven of them, but I only use six because the sevenths, well, 
It's actually from the YouTuber called PD Winnell or Winnell. Not really sure how to pronounce it. But most the main six I go to are Secret Shore and they have toxic orbs slowing down the house easier. Which by the way, if you do 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 the blissy training, I have noticed one thing. If the move is physical, it does more damage than a special attack. Put simply Blissey has lower defense than special defense. Uh well anyways, because of that I got it's about well, kinda confusing on the time. The computer says nine twenty one, but the clock that I have in here says nine eighteen. But it's about then and I gotta get them done before midnight. And I'm only on the second one, so yeah, I'm no mass expert, but I think you should be able to figure out what's going to happen if I don't get finished with this video quickly and get back to it. But the items, while well, I will be glad to give you the items, was the Pokemon Moon and Pokemon Sun, or reverse that if you're a perfectionist like I am. But anyways, with those games coming out, those items aren't really going to be much use if you can't transfer them. Which, by the way, if there's anyone from the Pokemon Company listening, maybe you should think about adding that to Pokemon Bank. Like, maybe transferring leftover Pokeballs that you don't have any use for in the game, or maybe other random items. I mean, getting all the items is great and all, but when you get the game completed and have a ton of items that you never even use in the game but when you get the next game someone wants to trade and is looking for a specific item that's not going to be helpful plus if there's one thing that I personally hate it's getting a ton of items or ton of a specific item in one game you get to the next and then you're like ah oh, hero no why now I gotta go and search for the whole stuff again or like was getting stuff from black to black too, you have to do a ton of trades. Like for me, I had to do that with every single one of the Arceus plates. Do you know how long that took? I mean, seriously. That, that was annoying. Just, just plain and simple. That's annoying. I mean, I'm fine with them adding them in new games and all, but I think I speak for us all, speak for all Pokemon players and Pokemon trainers out there. When I say, it's annoying to have to go and search for them every single doggone game that comes out. I mean, I know some people may like that, but I am not one of them. It gets annoying. I don't mind finding certain items. I don't mind getting new items. I don't mind buying new items. But when an item is very hard to come by, either because it takes a boatload of battle points, or because you can only find one in the game and it's not a key item, like a Gracidia flower or a shiny charm or something, you're like, why? Just, just for the love of heroes and Pokemon, why? And I actually had someone who I have a friend code with and is a and is a subscriber, which you should know who you are, but they asked me for a Garchomp Megastone. I can give out some of the Megastones because I have a few extras. The ones I know for sure I have extras of because I have two of the Pokemon, one normal and one shiny, or just maybe both of them normal color but one has a different ability or maybe they have two mega evolutions there's of course the Charizard and Mew 2 I have one of each of their mega stones but two of the Pokemon and I got some doubles of the mega stone kinda because I didn't realize you could get all the mega stones in this game so yeah that didn't exactly help anyone so Anyways, there's also the Garchomp, Gengar, and Lucario. I know those I have extras of, 
in the level of I have another Pokemon. Someone asked me for a Garchomp Megastone. I do have two, but they're on both my Garchomps. One's a normal color, one's a shiny color. And if you played this Pokemon at Omega Ruby and or Alpha Sapphire, you know that the Garchomp Megastone is literally the hardest one to get in the game because you have to get to the Platinum rank with the flags. While I told that person that I'd get it, well, with the new games coming out, it's not really going to be much use unless the person doesn't plan on getting the new games. So, yeah, I'd be glad to get this. I still am going to try to get the person that thing, but I may not be able to get it because I'm only at about... 680 or so flags, give or take a few. And I need to get up to about a thousand before I get the platinum rank. And I am only getting about six a day from the Blissey training, so yeah. Do the mass. And by the way, if you can't because your brain just doesn't work or because you can't figure it out or whatever, I'll just put it this way. Plain and simple, I won't be able to do it. Well, not unless I either A, cheat the game with something like an action replay, which I won't be able to do because the things are on my SD card. That way I have all the games and it's easier to play instead of getting the doggone cartridge, taking it in and out. I mean, seriously, that that was a big improvement on the Nintendo systems, I might add. My, I, I'll admit, it's just very annoying when you have to do that just to change games. But anyways, uh, long story short, because of, well, oh man, uh, oh, the only other way I'd be able to do it would probably change the time, but yeah, that may cause some problems with my 3DS on its own, since I know there are certain features in certain games that are dependent upon the time on the 3DS. So, and I think one of them also includes going to the eShop, so I don't want to mess that up and not be able to get Sun and Moon the day they come out. So, yeah. Anyways, one last thing and then I'm going. For Pokemon Sun and Moon, I haven't really been able to decide which one I am going to get. Because Pokemon Sun, it has all the core Pokemon to battle. Like, the Totem Pokemon is a brand new Pokemon rather than a... Or one of them, anyways. Is... Is a brand new Pokemon. I think it's either Young Goose or it's Evolved Form. I know it's part of Young Goose's evolutionary set. That much I remember for sure. I just can't remember which one is the Evolved Form and which one's not, but it's it's I know this much. It's the Evolved part of its evolutionary set. And in Pokemon Moon, it's the Alolan Raticate. And then Pokemon Sun has the Legendary that I actually like more, as well as the Ultra Beast that I like more as well. The one that kind of looks like, well, basically like he got him a choke, combined it with, and then basically it's like he got him a choke, a ride on, and. <laughs> And then combine that with a mosquito. Or if you play Yokai Watch, that mosquito, Yokai, that I can't even remember the name of. But it essentially drains positive energy out or drains positive energy out of people and creates a negative energy aura. Can't even remember, but it basically looks like a mosquito with a Grim Reaper cloak. That's the size of a human. Anyways. That one looks more interesting. 
And I actually noticed the the Ultra Beast in Pokemon Sun looks like a mosquito. Something that is usually awake at night. And in Pokemon Moon, the Ultra Beast looks more like a Lacewing, which is an insect that's awake in the day. Now, how they even made that decision is beyond me. But, eh. Anyways, also, I don't even know how Solgaleo, the legendary in Pokemon Sun, is a part steel. It's supposed to be based off the sun, for Pete's sake. The sun is not a big, gigantic, floating ball of metal. It's a floating ball of fire. Fire! Where in the known universe does the steel even come in? I mean, the psychic I can get because of Lunatone and Soul Rock. And because I think they're supposed to have, if I'm not mistaken, they're supposed to have the powers to make the sun and moon go up and down and such. Kind of like what they've mentioned. Kind of similar to what's happened in a franchise called My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Which, by the way, I am a fan of. You want to know the specific reasons before you start calling me something like, Oh, you're gay or start making fun of me? Check my first video. Or check one of my older ones. I think it's in my first one. I really can't remember. But, anyways, Pokemon Sun has all the cool Pokemon that you battle. Pokemon Moon, however, has the reverse day and night cycles. And with me having a messed up sleep schedule to the point of I'm pretty much nocturnal, that, yeah. That's self-explanatory. And because of the whole fact that I... Well... Sometimes, with Pokemon games, even back with Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver, I'd stay up at night just to enjoy the nighttime functions. Of course, it didn't help that sometimes it was on school nights, but... Honestly, when I was younger, my grandfather actually kept me up at night to... do homework. And this one I was in second grade. And it was mainly because by the time I got home, I didn't want to do anything except sit down. But then again, when you're walking around an entire school campus, and that is quite big, I might add, you'd be tired too. I remember a few times where he forced me to stay up past 5 in the morning. And then, well... And then I ended up needing to go to bed. I was just going to lay down and have my eyes closed for a minute or so. Next thing I know, I wake up and it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon or so. Yeah, more on that in another video series. I think I'm going to have titled Weird, Racky, Random, ra Random, and Stressful Memories or Situations from My Childhood. Or from my life. I'm not really sure of the specific wording, but it'll be. I'll give more detail to that in there. But, anyways, because of that, my sleep schedule has been stressed, been messed up since then. So. I will admit my grandparents were always telling me to go to bed when I was doing hard going soft silver in the middle of the night and it was on a school night, but well, combine my ADHD with the fact that my grandfather forced me to stay up when I was in second grade so I could do my homework, even to the point of and then my teacher actually started telling me to stop staying up playing video games and I had to explain to her that I didn't even have any video games to play with. And that my grandfather was keeping me up. Of course, one thing that stays in common at school is when I was in school, I would always tell the teacher, long story short, I would always tell the teacher something. The teacher didn't believe me. And one of the two things would happen. A, I'd get punished. Or B, teacher would call home and forget embarrassing me, they basically embarrassed themselves because they were like, man, you really were telling the truth. I'm like, 
Well, of course I was telling the truth. But anyways, like I said, story for another time. But since that whole issue, my sleep schedule has been messed up. And I've even, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have dark cir dark circles under my eyes that have been there since second grade. And they just started clearing up a few weeks ago, and then they came back with, I guess the best metaphor would be interest. I mean, I honestly don't care about how I look or even fashion. Also, I don't really care about fashion because I honestly don't understand it, but. <laughs> While I may not really care about my appearance, that still doesn't mean I'd like dark circles under my eyes. Because for me, it's just a constant reminder of that very stressful situation. Of course, it doesn't help when my mom and grandparents and almost every single per, every single authority figure that I've met in my entire life has a, has a one time or other said, you need to get to bed early. And coming from someone who was forced to stay up in second grade, and has a disorder that gives them so much energy and they can't slow their body down, I'll just put it this way. You'd have a better chance of teaching a cat to fly a rocket ship than you would be getting me to sleep. And that's saying something. I mean, seriously. I've noticed that if I actually lay in bed, my grandfather, I explained this to my grandfather several times, and he said, well, then just lie down. You'll go to sleep. Well, yeah, I will admit I'll go to sleep, but then when I wake up, well, I sleep for far less time than I normally would, and I wake up feeling more tired than when I went to bed. So I physically, and in every sense of the word, have to get rid of, or phrasing, have to get rid of all my energy and actually be so sleeping that I'm near about falling face first on the floor in order to even go to sleep. And for someone who has tons of energy to the point it's like a sh permanent sugar rush, that's a very difficult task. So, I'm stuck choosing between interesting quality that's only, that's version exclusive, or cool Pokemon. Yeah, you can see my problem. So I guess all that's left to say is bye. And I hope that I'll be able to contact you guys via friend codes and whatnot. And also, by the way, if you do set that up, there are two pieces of information I'll need to know. Like, one, when would you be available to do the trade? Because, well, can't do the trade if one of us is online and the other is not. And two, I also need to know if you're going to be able to do game chat. Because I'm, well, for first of all, it's not because I'm a creep, creepy person or weirdo or stalker or whatever bad phrasing you want to say. It's because, well, for me, it's just not enjoyable interacting with someone when you can't actually hear their voice. And honestly, maybe going to techno technology age, and social media age, but I don't use many social media websites, and I, well, I prefer actually speaking to the person. I mean, sure, I guess I could find a way to communicate without speaking. I mean, I have a ton of unknown, and then I can just spell out what I want to say, but I tend to like to use game chat because I want to be able to, well, I want to be able to react and respond with some and as close to I'm standing in front of you, talking to you, kind of way as I possibly can. That way, it's not just me staring at a screen. And just pressing buttons, but actually I'm better interacting with you. Plus... Well, I'm kind of wanting to use that to make some more friends since, one, don't kind of hard to make friends when where you, where I live, this is, this is pretty much the biography of every single person. Well, 
not super specific, but most of the people where I live fall into one of these three categories. A, their elementary school age. B, their between my mom's age and my grandparents' age. Or C, they're my age and are on pretty much every single social media website. And then it didn't help when I was younger. And I'm not joking. I could just say, hey, my name is. And then they'd be like, be quiet or I'll punch you in the face. I'm like, what did I even do wrong? My mom told me if I want to make friends, say hello, tell them my name. And now I'm doing that and someone's threatening to punch me in the face just for talking. How is that? How in the known omniverse is that normal? And what's worse is most of those people I talk to later and ask why they do that and they're like, I don't even remember doing that. I mean, seriously, come on, people. So it's really hard to make friends when 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 almost every person that you meet is either so older than you that it would make them old enough to be your parents or grandparents so much younger than you that it makes you look like a freak or weirdo or creeper or creepo or any other phrasing you could use or they're your same age and don't even want to talk to you except through stuff like Facebook, Twitter, social media sites, and text messages. I mean, that's fine and all. I mean, I don't mind talking to them that way. It's just enjoyable when no one ever actually speaks to you. And also, from a very talkative person and from someone who has ADHD, I crave social interaction. And, well... Game chatting is the closest thing I actually am going to be able to get to a social interaction. Well, I guess aside from using Skype, email, and YouTube, but you get the point. So, I'm fine if you don't want to use game chat. I'm just saying let me know, because otherwise I'm usually going to start everyone with game chat. And because the Wi-Fi is going haywire here, if it doesn't connect, I'll have no idea if it's because the person didn't want to use game chat or because the Wi-Fi just shut me off. I've actually had that happen sometimes. So I really don't want to, like I, I think I may have already stayed in here, I don't want to look like an idiot. I mean, it's... It really makes me feel stupid when a problem happens, and I'm like, what even just happened? I don't know if that's my ADHD, my OCD, or some other undiagnosed quality, but the point still remains. It's not enjoyable. It's not enjoyable when you feel like an idiot. So, yeah. I guess all that's left to say is, Bye, and I hope I can help you guys in Pokemon. So, yeah.